Welcome back, folks, to more Pool of Radiance. Let's claim our reward. Bavant was delighted with the child's rescue. They left some trinkets for you. Here's your reward. All right. All the commissions uh, available are done, complete. We have only to return to Zimtu Keep. You might be wondering, hey, why does Ronsuck have negative nine armor class all of a sudden? Well, that's because the can the captain of the bandit camp drops plus three plate mail, a plus four longsword, and a plus two shield. So now we have a plus four longsword with our plus two shield and plus three plate mail. That gives us negative nine armor class. Which adds plus 9 to the die roll of a 1d20 for any creature attacking us. So, yeah. Damage 1d8 plus 10. So say the creature's stat go was 10, attacking us. Mine's 8. Or say I was attacking myself with 8. I would have to roll a 17 or higher on a 20-sided dice to hit myself, basically. A level, Another level 6 fighter with the same strength and the same stat go. That's how that works. You basically add the negative modifier of someone's armor class to the stat go, And that's what they have to roll on a 20-sided dice to hit. That makes it quite difficult for anyone to hit Ronstock that doesn't have a negative Thacko or a really low Thacko. Of course, if their Thacko was 1 or 2, they'd only have to roll not, uh, 10 or 11 respectively. So We're going to head back to the west side. I go ahead and save up a little bit here. Alright, so from that Buccaneer base, just keep going west. A group of all gods ride by. We're going to save here. This is outside the outpost. A group of men on horseback ride out to meet you. Their leader says, Are you the diplomatic envoy sent from Flan? Of course we are. You're being escorted into the outpost. From here you see a lodge and a wall. Around the central keep, this area is busy with men entering and leaving the barracks. You're led toward the central keep. You're inside the commandant's office. He greets you and hand, you hand him the papers. After skimming through the papers, the commandant says, I welcome you and hope you'll join me for dinner tonight. He tells a guard to give you a tour of the outpost. The guard giving the tour says, Here you see one of our fine barracks. There are six of these here, and each can hold over 100 men. Here you see one of the fine watchtowers, which were built by the finest stone masons in the land. From here you can also see the solidly built outside wall. This wall has survived many attacks, including one from a dragon. The guard says, That will conclude our tour. I will show you to your quarters. Here you are. Do not leave this area. Then he leaves. Probably shouldn't have had that on overhead map, but whatever. So anyways, the storyline here is Zintel Keep is the major city west of Flan. The Keepers, as they are known, look warily on the resurgence of their ancient rival, Flan. But Lord Cadorna, acting for the city council, is attempting to negotiate a treaty with Zintel Keep so that Flan can turn its full energies on rebuilding. The party is ordered to deliver a magically sealed diplomatic pouch to the nearest outpost of Zintel Keep far to the west, which we just did. Lord Cadorna is actually trying to cement power in the new city of Flan for himself. He knows that this heroes would oppose his bid for supreme power in the city, so he's sending them on a suicide mission. He also knows the Keepers are tough and nasty, so he's going to test them by having them assassinate the heroes. 
In the last page of the diplomatic message, Lord Kadona proposes an alliance between himself and the forces of Zentil Keep. Zentil Keep is to signal acceptance of the alliance by returning the heroes to Flan, with their heads on a pike. The Keepers will not get to the assassination order until they have read all hundred pages of the diplomatic double talk. In the beginning, they will treat the heroes as honored diplomatic messengers. After they read the message and accept the alliance, their attitude will change. We'll have to go into the outpost, keep our wits about us, learn what we can, and try to get out alive when things go shitty shit. Alright, well... Relax. A dusk of God comes in. You arrive at the officer's mess and are seated with the commandant and his advisors. A fine meal of roast boar is served with a hearty red wine. The commandant turns to one of the characters and says, Sal, how's everything in Flan? What do you talk about? Let's talk about the city. Are you going to talk about new or old Flan? How about uh, new Flan? As you talk about new Flan, the commandant listens carefully. The commandant says, is it true that the real power is in Flan? Is Bishop Brachio? Yep, that's true. Sure. You say that Bishop Brachio is the real power in Flan, and the commandant responds by saying, Flan must be a city of fools if the Bishop of Tyr has power. You continue your conversation with the new commandant. Let's talk about magic. One of the commandant's advisors asks if you've heard of any unique magical items or places. Ah, uh, do lie. You make up stories about the wonderful magical items and places. You captivate everyone sitting around you. You continue your conversation with the Commandant. And then we talk about politics. As you mention politics, the Commandant says, I've heard that Franz town council is corrupt, specifically Ulrich Überhand. Is this true? No, it's not true. You say that Ulrich Eberhand is a loyal, honest man. The Commandant smirks and says, yes, of course he is. You talk a little while longer than your Commandant takes you back to your quarters. We sleep with watch. You wait in your room for about two hours when suddenly four armed guards burst in and attack you. A battle begins. And you whoop that ass. Whoa, what the fuck? Yeah, I got it on the super speed now, because I'm tired of the fucking battles going all slow, so... We got it on Mach 10 now. Let's all roll, bitch. No, I don't want this shit. More guards come. By the way, I got I got four fireballs waiting to happen. I ain't fucking around with that hay spell no more. Alright, so obviously shit got hostile.
<laughs> Holy shit! I'm gonna kill everyone in this fuck. All right, I want to kill some more Zintal Key bastards. Take search off. That's just fucking retarded. <laughs> Fuck it. I know eventually you get to Just have to keep attacking. Eventually, there should be a leader guard. I think he's a dwarf, but right now it just looks like a bunch of pussy guards. You can escape now if you want, but uh, you want to kill the commandant's group. The commandant happens to be wearing some plus two plate mail and has a plus two longsword. We want that plus two plate mail for Ember Duke. Saving all our spells for the bigger battle. Shoot motherfuckers. The thing about the AI is it doesn't know any better as far as sweeping. It, the character won't embed themselves. As many guys as possible. Not that at this point it really matters. Even my mages could wipe these guys out. So anyways, I'm going to keep fighting waves until I get to the battle with the Commandant who is a Dwarven fighter. That's how you know when you're at him. And I'll just pause the camera until then. Alright, here it is. It was actually the battle afterwards. So 
So there's AIDS. We got some AIDS. I'm getting attacked by AIDS. Here's the Dwarven Fighter. He's basically the Commandant and his AIDS and Corporals. Alright, right off the bat we're going to do a hold person. Oh, that's it. That's all she wrote, little dwarf. I'll cast a fireball just because I can. Bye-bye. And that's over. Yeah, they're gonna run. Oh, you didn't quite get away. Well, those are gauntlets of ogre power there. A large group of men lead the attack by the Commandant. This is the final battle here. Fuck your mage, son! I'll screw shit all up for him. Commandant, we're gonna cast, uh... Hold on him. Oh, sorry, game over. <laughs> Bye! And we're gonna throw a big fireball down that area.
You're crazy. Yeah, you better run. We'll let them go. We killed the Commandant, which is who's got the equipment we want. After killing the Commandant, the rest of the outpost either surrenders or runs away like little bitches. And then we save. And we rule the day once again. Take the boat back to town. Let's slow down the text so it doesn't skip by any of it, hopefully. get our reward here outside the clerk's office at your entry the council clerk begins looking through a stack of papers we were pleasantly surprised that you completed your mission so swiftly Katorno was wagering your return would be much delayed. Here is your reward. The clerk speaks. Porphyrius, Katorno is a traitor in this city. If you find him, kill him. The clerk shuffles through her papers. On the matter of commission, I can offer the following. Lord Ursulingen wishes urgently to speak with you. Go through the south door of the traitor Cadorna's old quarters. These are all of the commissions currently available. Thank you for coming. I must be brief, for our need is urgent. Our one chance to defeat the enemy is through an assault on the castle. To do this, we must first secure Stajanau Gate. The gate is too strong to be taken by storm. A small band must slip inside and hold until relieved. You are the best and bravest. The council has instructed me to entrust the tax to you. All right, so now we have to go to Stajanau Gate. But first, let's go uh, appraise shit. And turn the tech speed back up. Almost enough for level 7 here. Uh, pretty much the mages and clerics are ma maxed out at level 6. They can't go any higher. Fighters, I believe, can go to level uh, 7 or 8. Unfortunately, there is a level cap already. As far as I know. At least the manual only says. Alright, so let's encamp here. Ultra speed. Check out what we got here. We got two two-handed swords. I don't need two. I'm gonna go ahead and sell one. Uh, the plus four long swords even better than the plus three versus undead. But I'm keeping 
uh, one for Ember Dew for when we visit the graveyard. That gives her 1800 strength as opposed to 1850. So the Gauntlet Ogre Power give 1800, which is going to give an additional uh, attack. She's at 1d10 plus 8. Gives her an extra plus 3 on her damage. So that's a pretty good weapon there, or a pretty good item for her to have. Plus 2 plate mail. Let's go ahead and get rid of this plate mail. And equip the plus two. And a plus two long sword. I actually like having the better armor class. So I'm going to go ahead and sell the plus two two handed sword. And then we're going to ready the plus two long sword and plus one shield. We can sell that. Ring of Fire Resistance, we'll go ahead and put that on. Javelin and Lightning. Three potions of extra healing. trade shields here because we have our two fighters up front usually we're gonna sell this old longsword we're gonna trade the plus one shield to clot so she has a shield that'll give her negative eight armor class so we got our two fighters with negative nine negative eight armor class pretty diesel our fighter thief is at one armor class that's because he's wielding a bow plus four leather armor. He also has the plus one shield, which will bring him down to negative one if he needs. Clot, our cleric, is at negative three, and both our mages are at zero. But, what do we have here? Braces armor class three, so that's going to bring them down to negative one. We can sell these old ones. I think. I don't think they stack with other shit. There's another ring of fire resistance. We're going to no, we're not going to sell that. We're going to give that to our two fighters. Hopefully they're up front taking the dragon breath. Hopefully, that is. Also, a wand of lightning. I'm going to go sell some more shit, get rid of the gems and the jewelry, probably end up affording another diamond necklace. We At this point, we have four diamond necklaces, so we have 100000 in gold right there. Yeah, the braces don't stack. Can't have other armor with it, so we'll sell those. They're worth 9,000 gold. Appraising our gems and jewelry. And I'll see you folks in the next video. Thanks for watching Pool of Radiance. Stay tuned for more.